It's good afternoon. Actually, chess will be tomorrow. Today we talk cybersecurity, and um, so the title of our talk with uh, my friend Andre, uh, it's taking back control of the internet. Um, actually, I have to say that I'm a little bit very about this, this the title because we never had control of the internet, and I don't think we'll ever have control of the internet because it's 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 growing, it keeps growing, and it's too fragmented. So. Um, but, you know, let's see what, what we can do, you know, just to at least to limit the damage uh, that uh, some of us feel, you know, with this uncontrolled uh, growth of, of um, online services and businesses. And I think it's important, you know, before we actually address the issue, to look a little bit at the history of Internet. So it's, um, it's, we can, all, of course, go all the way back to the 60s when uh, it was the concept of ARPANET has been designed and in 69, the first signal was sent from uh, UCLA to Stanford. Um, but, you know, we probably should talk more about, you know, the commercial application of this technology. That's the uh, late 90s. And in 1991, Tim Berners-Lee um, uh, actually made it, made it work. So, Andre, say a few words about it. Yeah, well, thank you, Gary. Uh, hi, everyone. It's kind of surreal to be here in person again. Uh, well, so... <laughs> It's interesting because it's been three decades now since the web uh, has been with us. Uh, as Gary pointed out, it's about one billion seconds uh, since uh, Tim Berners-Lee uh, invented the web. Uh, by the way, he's doing a talk here uh, tomorrow, so make sure to attend that as well. Uh, but since then, a, a lot has changed, of course. Uh, what started, I think, a bit uh, idealistic, uh, really kind of... It's an idea of an open exchange of information, uh, kind of endless opportunities of uh, data or information, uh, exchange, uh, education, innovation, all these kind of great things, uh, has become uh, a, 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 a bit uh, dangerous as well. Uh, so when I started my career in 1995, uh, we didn't talk about cybersecurity. We didn't talk about, uh, we, didn't, we never thought the problem would become so large, but we already saw some, some threat there. Uh, Windows 95 that was released in 1995 really was the first time when the internet was brought to the masses, that is, uh, it provided mainstream connectivity. Uh, but there were only about 40 million people connected to the internet back then in 1995. Uh, but already there were some, some threats to it, uh, some viruses that uh, floated around. Uh, I had the pleasure to co-author the first version of uh, antivirus program for Windows 95 in the year 1995. Uh, but uh, that's kind of how, how it started. Uh, yes, okay. But now, uh, what, is the, what is the core of the problem we're dealing now? Because we hear a lot of you know, complaints, so that's, it's, it's not safe, and uh, you have you know, corporations, you have the government, and it's just, again, the public is always looking for a scapegoat. But I think, again, as you know, it's understanding what internet is, you know, we should now look at what, what are the threats, what are the yep. problems yep. that we, we can identify, and also, realistically, that we can address and solve. Yeah, yeah. So, so still saying the year 2000, I think something really changed because the internet started to take off. Uh, that is, uh, it you know, went from 40 million in 95 to, to 400, 450 million in the year 2000. So 10x increase over that uh, relatively short period of time that continued. Uh, but still around the year 2000, it was still uh, a relatively uh, limited problem to computer viruses, to some sort of attacks that could be relatively easy to understand, uh, relatively easy to detect and block. Now, if I fast forward today, it's exponentially more complicated, more sophisticated, and more dangerous. Uh, we live in a world where the estimated uh, uh, damage caused by cybercrime is in the trillions of dollars that's per the FBI report. Uh, we are living in a, 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 in a, in a world where uh, the um, power of big data, the power of uh, machine learning and AI is used for mass surveillance uh, on a kind of nation state uh, level. And also uh, where uh, manipulation is happening and uh, is being used to sort of uh, form people's opinions and uh, not only about what to buy or what to like or what to dislike, but also who to vote. Uh, so just a few examples here. I'll probably start uh, with... Uh, 
a, uh, a recent study uh, from uh, Freedom on the Internet. Uh, 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 it was a report that was published uh, this year, basically saying that 75% of people today live in a country uh, where uh, people were either imprisoned or arrested uh, for posting something online. 72% of people live in countries where people were injured or killed uh, because of posting something online. And 43% of people live in country uh, where uh, there is strong restrictions or even outright bans of uh, communication platforms. Uh, so that just gives you uh, some, some very, very rough sense of what we are talking about here. Now, uh, um, of course, uh, the, the probably the biggest violator here is China. We should we should make that yeah, clear. Simply, but because of numbers, yes, yeah, yeah, sheer, well, sheer numbers. Well, I, I don't think it's just the numbers. It's actually also the uh, the shall, uh, shall we say the the persuasion in, in, with which uh, they are approaching this. Uh, there's obviously pro provinces like Tibet and uh, Xinjiang uh, where uh, they basically they are deploying and have in, 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 uh, in production oh. uh, large-scale machine learning systems yeah. uh, that collect information. Everything uh, is being uh, aggregated from uh, DNA records of the citizens to you know, social media uh, posts to private chats to private emails to bank accounts to telco records. Uh, and all of that is being uh, used to monitor and shape and potentially control the population in these provinces. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it, it's very important. When you talk about China, of course, I can add something about Russia. You can go in jail, you know, for two years for, for a blog post. Yeah, and, uh, and by the way, anybody here from China? <laughs> no, it's... Anybody from Taiwan? No, it just it seems that, you know, we're in a different part of the world. So, but it's the, what is very important, and what I, I just, just, you just said now, is that, you know, there are problems and problems. People are complaining, you know, about uh, Facebook, you know, facial recognition. And I understand that, you know, while I was flying from New York to, to Lisbon, they, Facebook decided to scrap the program. Uh, but in China, it's, it's a state policy. So the problems that people are dealing with in the free world, they are technically the same, but they, they have very different Im uh, 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 um, um, implications. So it, you know, here it could be you know, unwanted advertising or some you know, misuse the data for political benefits, but there it's literally you know, yeah. countries like China, Russia, and, Iran, and Afghanistan, uh, and you know, long least, 75%, as you said, it's a matter of li life and death. Yeah, well, I, I actually, uh, the, the, I think the bigger problem that most people don't realize is that this Chinese technology really today is not limited to China. China is actively exporting this technology to countries like Pakistan. Yeah, because there are many countries. clients, but there are many yeah. potential clients, you know, that's the... Latin yes. America, yeah. Bolivia, Ecuador, yes. Peru, uh, Malaysia, yeah. all these countries are actually deploying that same Chinese technology uh, and it's obviously connected to the economic uh, uh, power uh, in this region that, okay. that China is having these days. Yeah, but okay, but many of these things we have been discussing, you know, over years. So I've been working with the last for five years and, you know, conference after conference. So we heard about these concerns, but naturally pandemics was like, you know, it's, it was a milestone. So now, as we say, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's a new era. So before COVID, BC, now we start counting, you know, it's, 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 it's um, uh, um, year one, year two. So um, naturally COVID, you know, um, pushed people, you know, uh, um, to their small screens. So certain things that were not hypothetical, but they were not as pressing now become paramount. So, um, and of course the, the number of threats uh, and actually, the the uh, uh, the amount of damage that can be done now by uh, um, by um, uh, hostile actors online yep. has increased dramatically. Oh yeah, totally. Uh, I mean, clearly, COVID has uh, increased our dependency on online, uh, without any doubt. In in fact, we just recently ran a global survey where people would say uh, about six out of ten people would say that they're. Uh, dependency on the internet has increased dramatically uh, over the last couple of years or since the start of the pandemic. Uh, but it also uh, made the problems that we spoke about much worse. And uh, the, the, the thing here is that it's always two sides of the same coin, right? So on one hand, uh, it brings you all these great benefits, but on the other, uh, you've got issues. We didn't quite discuss the issues that are 
uh, kind of more present in the Western Hemisphere, in the democratic part of the world. But there are also issues. It's not just about China and Chinese technology, but uh, obviously issues uh, that first and foremost start with uh, data privacy, per he uh, treating of personal data, uh, which has become more a uh, commodity these days. And uh, we're talking about data economy or data or surveillance economy uh, that, is, that we live in. Uh, that is something that is totally happening in the, in, in, in the Western part of the world, and that has only become worse uh, during the pandemic. Uh, so uh, my, my, my view is that, uh, you know, on one hand, uh, it's, it's quite fascinating, actually, the new opportunities that it has brought. Uh, if you think about the distribution of world's wealth, for example, as in, you know, Previously, you had these physical hubs where people would be located, and that's where the wealth was. Like, you would have Silicon Valley, Manhattan, London, you know, all these uh, obvious locations where most of the world's wealth would be accumulated. But that's because where, that's where uh, the, uh, the attractive employers were. That's where the action was uh, happening. Now that we are moving much more to the online environment, that's not the case anymore. It doesn't have to be the case anymore. I think what we'll be seeing increasingly more is that you will see more even spread uh, of op op well, opportunities. Uh, opportunities. Yeah, so again, it's, this is any crisis in, is potential opportunity. Yes, yes, um, absolutely. But you know, it's this. It's you know, as you, as you mentioned, you know, it's um, uh, protecting our data is you know somehow our responsibility as well. And uh, very often we want to look for a scapegoat. You know, government doesn't do that. The corporations are bad. And uh, and uh, okay, just it's someone is guilty. But we still, you know, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but still the most popular password is from one to eight, and the second one is from one to nine. Yeah, so it's the, and of course, you know, this is, it's the, we, we keep adding um, mobile devices or online devices to, to our life, and of course, we create more targets. How many of you have smart home? Come on, come on, come on. Uh, not so many people, but still enough. But you do recognize that, you know, that's just, if you have a connected, you know, network at home, you know, the, the resilience of the system depends on the weakest device, the weakest device. And of course, many of them are weak because if you buy, you know, a coffee machine or washing machine, they're part of the IoT and the corporations are promoting it. They know how to do washing machines. They maybe have 100 years of experience, but they have no idea how to secure them. And of course, you know, you have a very big manual. And on page 73, you have something about, uh, about uh, security. You never read it. The hacker did. And of course, many of us, let's be honest, we do it on default mode. Okay, thank you very much. So that just makes it, makes it an, 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 an ideal target. So it's this, it seems that, you know, we, we have to actually recognize that, you know, the Internet today is, just, it's, it's, I would say it's a, it's a connection between three constellations, our uni Internet universe. It's government, big tech, and public. And public is also connected to, to those two uh, because we are customers and we are voters. And it seems that, you know, the public is still figuring out so how to, how to um, uh, use certain, you know, uh, government regulations for our advantage. And it seems that government is not listening, you know, to us because this message from us, from the public, is not yet being fully, you know, um, uh, um, 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 uh, described, you know, just there was, there's, no, there's no like an order to the politicians to do something immediately. So what is this, again, is this, you know, since we have these more and more problems dealing with, to deal with now, so what is the, what come, can come from a vast, so that's yeah. the, and uh, what is the, what is uh, uh, the policy to, uh, to, to, to start addressing these issues? Look, I think that uh, the, the, the situation is serious enough that uh, this whole kind of protection or safety security industry has to be slightly uh, reimagined. Uh, that is, we are in the forefront of something larger, problems uh, that didn't exist before, again, mainly about data privacy, mainly about uh, data manipulation, rather than the virus problem that uh, was the problem of the 90s and the 2000s. That problem still exists, but it's not perhaps the most uh, emerging problem. Uh, the new problems are more uh, about data privacy and uh, people's identities. Uh, so what I think, first and foremost, we need to make sure that uh, security, safety, and data privacy is actually baked into the 
fabric of uh, core systems that we are using, which isn't happening. It's kind of easy to say, but of course, uh, it's much harder to do. And uh, you can probably not expect the market to self-regulate itself. So I think what will be needed also is a bit of a help from regulators. So we've seen, of course, uh, the GDPR uh, push in Europe uh, in 2018. Uh, there is uh, more uh, happening in, across you know, other parts of the world, California, CCPA, uh, New York State, etc. But it's relatively slow. And it's not as effective as some uh, have uh, but, but wished is it, yeah, But it's when you say GDPR, I mean, how good is this any, any, any new government regulations unless people are willing to use it and know how to use it? So, No, I, uh, look, I think uh, it is really important that we have these frameworks in place to really set the rules of the game, that it's rules of engagement. Uh, up until very recently, it wasn't really clear what companies are supposed to, what kind of data are they supposed to collect, what is legal or what is permissible, what is not. And I think it's really important that we take this to the public forum yeah. and we discuss it properly. Yes, but it's just, you know, but GDPR rules, you know, just they apply to Europe, to America, to the free world. What about the unfree world? Because it's, it's internet is just, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's a globally connected system. So, so how can you know, uh, compensate for disadvantages uh, caused for, for us and for the companies and individuals in, the, in a free world versus yeah. you know, the, the, the unfree world, you know, mel mel hostile actors from yeah. there that don't care about GDPR? Well, my view is that it will lead to probably even more polarization of the world, uh, as in you would have uh, the part of the world where this is really important and where uh, people actually, citizens, care about these kind of things. And then you probably have uh, some other part of the world where that's not so much the case, uh, but uh, I don't think that's anything new. That is something things like that have been around for uh, since the beginning. The other thing I would like to say is uh, I think we are in desperate need of a, of a kind of reusable platform for decentralized identities. Uh, because if you think about all the data breaches that are happening, for example, it's not necessarily a problem of these companies not doing enough good a job protecting their databases. But the problem is that there shouldn't be these databases in the first place. Uh, if you think about it, the right way to actually uh, uh, store this kind of information would be totally decentralized where it actually lives with the uh, with the person uh, and then only allowing selective access and temporary access to that kind of data so that it never can be centralized and stolen. Uh, so this model, I think, is broken today and needs to be rebuilt. And this is something that I really think that we'll be seeing in the next three or five years happening. I think, again, COVID and its COVID passes, all the vaccination stuff, has somewhat uh, opened that uh, theme again. It's not a new problem. We've been talking about this for 20 years. But I'm hopeful that COVID can be this driving catalyst uh, that will help it make it, uh, make it actually uh, yes. real. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, you know, as in chess, we have time limit. So and we have to respect it. And uh, um, I wish we could continue this conversation because it's important. But the whole summit, you know, just provides you with tons of useful information. OK, just don't expect, you know, a push button solution. Yes, it's not going to happen. So uh, and we'll never reach 100 percent, you know, control and security on the Internet. You know, but we, we should try. And again, it's all about combined efforts. Government slow, corporation slow, court slow. But again, we are moving in the right direction. Hopefully we're discussing the right issues. And again, so with our combined efforts, I expect us to, to, to do a lot of improvements. Thank you very much. Happy to go. Thank you Thank so you. much.